Good day. Welcome to Mayor King's TV News. I am Matsu Okbaimitorishe, and here are the headlines. Oluopwari disbands INYC leadership over failure to adopt new constitution. Federal government promises power will be restored to the north in 72 hours. ROCCG suspends two pastors over homosexuality allegations. Petrol price hike, third time in 60 days as crude price drops. Dangote falls for import as Tinubu summons Edun, Dangote and Kayari. Aris makes last big stage pitch to undecide voters, Baron, different part. Super Eagles to conclude qualifying campaign November 18th. Now the news and details. The Olu of Worry, Ogiami Atuwashi the Third, has reportedly disbanded the executive of Ishakiri National Youth Council, NIYC. This news stated that the monarch announced the dissolution on Monday, October 28th, at a well-attended Ishakiri Youth Assembly, following failure of the youth body to successfully adopt a new constitution and conduct election to elect new executives at the national and chapter levels. Reports indicated that the process of having executive position in the INYC for about 30 years has been by selection of persons loyal to certain leaders. The worry monarch at the well-attended Ishakiri Youth Assembly also declared that nobody above age 40 should be operating as youths in worry kingdom. He immediately appointed president of National Association of Ishakiri Graduates, NAIG, and National Association of Ishakiri Students, NAIS, as the core of a committee to draft new constitution for INYC with Chief Omolubi Neumi and Chief Wilson Ole working as advisors. The Constitution Drafting Committee, which is likely to have more members at the end of January 2025 to conclude its assignment for a new Executive Council of INYC to be elected. The federal government has said electricity will be restored to the northern Nigeria within the next three days. Speaking in Abuja, while responding to questions from members of the Senate Committee on Power, led by Senator A. Naya Abaribe, Abga Abia South, the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adalabu, who disclosed that power will get there in the next 72 hours, said that as a temporary measure, power will be supplied through the Uguaji Makodi transmission line, which could convey approximately 80% of affected states. Adela Bo noted that efforts were underway to assess the damaged grid with the assistance of security agencies. Meanwhile, the news recalled that on October 22nd, the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, reported an outage in the northeast, northwest, and parts of north central from the 330 kV KV Ukwaji RP double circuit transmission lines 1 and 2 trips. According to Nafia Satu Ali, Executive Director of the Independent System Operator, the Chiraru Cardinal Transmission Line supplying power to the north was vandalized by insurgents. However, in a response, President Bola Tinibu directed the military to provide security for workers repairing the power lines. Also, the minister has declared that attacks on power transmission towers, especially in the northern parts of the country, were acts of terrorism that will be dealt with by security forces. The Radium Christian Church of God, ROCCG, has announced the suspension of two ministers, Pastor Ayorinde Adebello and Deacon Oke Mayowa. These developments follow viral allegations of homosexuality after the popular blogger Chislova released a list of prominent Nigerians allegedly involved. Social media reactions have identified several individuals including Pastor Ayorin Day. This was outlined in an internal memo dated 28 October 2024, signed by ROCCG National Overseer, 
Pastor Sunday, a candidate titled Ava CCG suspends two pastors amidst homosexuality allegations. Akande informed the church special assistant to the general overseer on administration of the decision to temporarily relieve the accused of their duties, while the church conducts an investigation in the memo. Akande underscored RCCG's commitment to upholding biblical principles. Akande directed the special assistant to ensure a thorough investigation of the allegations. He called for the inquiry to be handled with confidentiality and respect for all involved parties, stating that the church leadership had requested that the investigation be concluded within two weeks. During this period, Akande instructed Adebello, Mayo, and any others allegedly involved to refrain from participating in any church activities, clarifying that the suspension is a precautionary measure pending the outcome of the investigation. Now on the business news. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited and NPCL yesterday adjusted the price of premium motor spirits, PMS, also known as petrol, to 1,025 naira per litre from 998 naira per litre in Lagos and environs. Similarly, in Abuja, the price of the product rose to 1,060 naira from 1,030 naira in what has become the third increase in the price of the product in two months. The latest increase came as the price of the Nigerian's Bonnie Light crude dropped to $72 per barrel from $75 per barrel, indicating a shortfall of 8.2% against the $77.96 per barrel reference price of the 2024 budget. In Lagos, Filling stations immediately adjusted their prices to reflect the new rates, while motorists were seen rushing to some outlets yet to adjust prices to buy the products. NNPCL had earlier this month asked pump prices from 897 naira per litre to 1030 naira per litre following the deregulation of petrol pricing by the federal government. However, Checks around the central area of Abuja on Tuesday night showed that most major marketers which had opened during the day shut their gates as they began the process of adjusting their meters. However, Adova PLC station independent marketers located opposite NNPC retail mega station continued to sell to motorists at the old price of 1,125 naira per litre. The chairman of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, on Tuesday urged petrol marketers, including the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, to source petrol directly from his refinery to meet local demand. This came as data obtained from the Nigerian Port Authority showed that the NPA is expecting a vessel with 20,115,000 litres of petrol motor spirits, popularly known as petrol, on Wednesday, October 30th, 2024. At the Tinkan Island port in Lagos, Dangote confirmed the refinery's readiness to supply fuel after closed door talks with President Bola Tinibu at the Asura Villa, Abuja. It was part of a delegation of the Implementation Committee on crude oil and refined product sales in local currency led by its chairman, Minister of Finance, Mr. Wale Edun. NNPC GMD Mr. Mele Kiari was also at the meeting. The committee was at the villa to brief President Bola Tinibu on its activities since the federal government first announced the policy last July. It stated that the refinery can produce over 30 million litres of oil daily at the full capacity and currently holds 500 million litres in reserve, enough to supply the country for over 12 days without imports. However, fuel queues have resurfaced, especially in cities like Lagos and Abuja, due to significant price hikes and supply chain issues. NNPCL raised petrol prices to over 1,000 naira per litre in some areas. Public frustration as some stations temporarily closed leading to longer wait times and reliance on black markets. Now on the foreign news. The nines before Kamala Harris 
sets off on a final multi-day swing through the key battleground states that would decide the 2024 presidential election. She gave one last speech, practically in the shadow of the White House. The venue choice was no accident. Donald Trump held his rally on 6th January 2021 in the same place, speaking to supporters just hours before thousands of them stormed the Capitol and disrupted certification of Joe Biden's presidential victory. On a mild October 9th, I stood before what our campaign estimated was 70,000 cheering supporters at an event they may hope is a counterpoint to the cold, violent January day. And it's unlikely chance the symbolism was missed by anyone watching. Iris made it explicit early in a speech. Iris didn't dwell on the 6th January riot, however, the venue did most of the heavy lifting, providing the subtext to the speech and the points from which Iris could pivot. Democrats were riding high back then, enthusiastic about their new nominee after weeks of despondency and inviting that led to Biden's decision to abandon his re-election bid. Now on the sports news. The Confederation of African Football Cup has fixed November 18th for the Nigerian's final 2025 African Cup of Nations AFCON qualifying match against Rwanda scheduled for the Goswila Fabio Stadium, Uyo. Ademola Olajire, Director of Communications at the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, stated this in a statement on Tuesday in Abuja. He said the encounter would draw the curtain on the race from Group D for slots at the 35th AFCON Finals to be held in Morocco from December 25th to January 2026. Olajire said Moroccan match officials have been appointed for the game with Sami Guazes as the referee at the encounter that will commence at 5 p.m. Nigerian time. He said that Prosper Ado from Ghana would be the commissioner while Somalian Ali Ahmed would be in the role of referee assessor. CAF has also appointed officials from Senegal with Isai Sai to be referee in the match 5 clash with Benin Republic at the State Felis of Port Biogoni. The match is scheduled for November 14th, 7 p.m. in Vorian time, 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Now a recap on our headlines. Olu of Wari disbands INYC leadership over failure to adopt new constitution. Federal government promises power will be restored to North in 72 hours. RCCG suspends two pastors over homosexuality allegations. Petrol price hike third time in 60 days as crude oil price drops. Dangote faults for import as Tinubu summons Edun, Dangote and Kayari. Aris makes last big stage pitch to undecided voters varying different parts. Super Eagles to conclude qualifying campaign November 18th. That's the news as edited by Emanuela Timiala. I am Matsu Okwemitorishe. Thanks for watching.